What's up guys? Welcome to the Mike Dolce Knows channel. Today we're going to talk about the ideal calorie intake for fat loss. And this is an area you've probably messed up every single time you've started a fat loss diet. Let's go. Now tell me if this is familiar. You feel terrible. You feel horrible. You feel bloated. You feel heavy. You can feel feel your 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 belly your love handles your, your your lower ab fat just pressing against your t-shirt your belt's about to explode you're flatulent you have indigestion you're not sleeping well you look in the mirror and man your face just looks like a, a bloated porpoise is that a word you feel terrible so you're motivated to finally make a change. Finally, you're gonna step up, you're gonna follow that fat loss program, and you're gonna get in amazing shape. Sound familiar, right? Everybody does this, everybody goes through this. Fast forward a few days, and there you go, sitting down with one of these online calorie calculators, trying to determine how many calories you need to eat in order to lose fat. We've all heard one pound of fat equals approximately 3,500 calories. Therefore, you say, I simply need to reduce my total caloric intake by 500 calories per day, and bingo, I'm gonna lose one pound of fat Per week. Now, many of you get even more motivated and you say, hey, if I can lose one pound of fat per week, I might as well lower my total caloric intake by a thousand calories per day and lose two pounds of fat per week. You do the calculation, you say, well, heck, two pounds per week, four weeks in a month, that's only eight pounds in a month. That's not progress at all. So what do you do? You go on a super low calorie diet with the false belief that the lower you reduce your calories, the more fat you will lose, and you're wrong. If this has happened to you, if this sounds familiar, this is the video you need to hear. Let me explain first exactly what a calorie is. One calorie is simply a unit of energy, that's all. One calorie is a unit of energy which corresponds to a unit of heat. Understanding that a calorie simply represents a unit of energy, we can better understand what the calorie consumption means with regards to overall fat loss, but also the most important part of calories is caloric expenditure through activity and through our BMR, which is our basal metabolic rate. The BMR is the amount of calories you need to survive while completely sedentary. Now, here's a crazy stat. 70% of the calories we burn are simply not moving at all. Wait, what does that mean? That means 70%, approximately 70%, of the calories you burn are those calories that simply allow you to live, to survive, not thrive, not build muscle, not work out, not have sexy time with your significant other. 70% of the calories utilized by your body in any given day are simply going about the business of fueling your physiological process. Now, knowing that, we can then make a better determination of how many calories we need to eat to one, survive, and two, to thrive. All right, so now the brass tacks of it. How many calories should you eat? Here's an easy hack. There's something called the Harris-Benedict equation. The Harris-Benedict equation. The Harris-Benedict equation is a mathematical formula that is most commonly recognized as the most accurate estimate of how many total calories an individual human needs to consume in order to live in order to sustain our BMR, our basal metabolic rate. Okay, oddly, the Harris-Benedict equation can simply be hacked by you and I by taking your body weight, multiplying by 10. I weigh approximately 210 pounds. If I were to apply Harris-Benedict, 
I would find I need to consume approximately 2,100 calories per day while completely at rest. And that's important. My Harris Benedict, my basal metabolic rate is 2,100 calories if I were to lay in bed and not move a muscle all day long. As soon as I move a muscle, as soon as I stand up, as soon as I walk and talk and run and jump and dance and sing and type on my computer and swipe on Instagram, I'm burning calories. Those calories need to be allocated also. The point of this, first step, take your body weight, times it by 10, and that becomes your BMR, your basal metabolic rate, which means that is the amount of calories you should never, ever, ever go below. Once we drop below your BMR, bad things happen, including fat gain. So let's say you're me, 210 pounds, 2,100 calories is what I need to simply survive while laying in bed totally at rest, but I'm a pretty active person. I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a homeowner, I'm a business owner. I'm an active individual. I like to move my body athletically a few times per day. I do morning cardio. I train with resistance or grapple later on in the afternoon. I go for walks around my neighborhood. I go fishing, like there's things that I do and everything I do has a caloric representation within my diet. I have to account for that because every time I move, if I consume 2,100 calories, but every time I move, that movement burns calories, units of energy. So if I only consume 2,100 calories, but I start rustling around in my bed and do nothing else, well, let's say maybe I burn 150 calories rustling around in bed. I've just created a 150 calorie deficit below my BMR, below my basal metabolic rate, which means now my body does not have enough energy in order to carry about the necessary physiological and biological process to keep me healthy. That is important to keep me healthy, let alone to repair and rebuild the damage that is incurred from environmental stresses and toxins, but also the stresses we put upon ourselves through exercise. Now let's talk about activity, intentional activity. There's a few different ways to think about this. I like to think in rules of three. You get up, you go to work, basically sloth your way through the day. You're not overly active. You're not overly motivated. You don't really have much pep in your step. I'm gonna add about 300 extra calories for every eight hours of movement minimal movement because you get up, you go downstairs, you make a cup of coffee, you put some coffee made in it, you grab a bagel, you sit in your car, you drive to work, you sit in your cubicle. You don't really move too much. You're not burning a lot of calories there. So I'll put that at somewhere around 300. Now, if you are more active, maybe like me, you get up, you move, you stand on your feet, you try not to sit down as much as possible, you get on the phone, you walk, you pace, well now we're burning considerably more calories and I'm going to say in an eight hour period of time, I'm going to burn 600 calories. So my BMR of 2100, I will then add 600 calories to. The next thing is exercise. If I get on the treadmill and I just kind of laissez faire and I just walk very slowly at maybe like a, a two to three mile an hour pace, maybe I'm gonna burn 300 calories, maybe four, maybe a little less let's say 300 calories again. But now, if I go for a light jog, I'm gonna burn 300 calories in about 30 minutes. Now let's say I'm at the gym, I'm slanging and banging, I'm squatting, I'm deadlifting, I'm doing chin-ups and dips and rows, I'm pushing hard. Well, I'm gonna burn another 600 calories in 60 minutes, no problem. So that being said, I'm a busy guy during the day, doing the nine to five, that's 600 calories. I'm doing 30 minutes of pretty intense cardio in the morning, that's 300 additional calories, and I'm slanging and banging the weights later on in the day, that's another 600 calories. So what does that equal? That's an extra 1,500 calories per day that I need to consume above my BMR, my basal metabolic rate. So at 2,100 calories plus 15, I need to consume about 3,600 calories per day to number one, ensure biological and physiological sufficiency for my health to survive. Number two, 
is I need to allocate for my daily activity of going to work and kissing my kids and cleaning the kitchen. Number three, I need to allocate for the energy expended during my exercise. All of this is great. So that puts me at right around 3,600 or so. So let's say on the average day, 3,500 to 4,000 total calories I'm going to burn in that day. This is the number that we should use in order to determine how many calories do we truly need and then how can we build a deficit from there. Now there's a bunch of different ways to build out your ideal meal plan. You can simply sit at your desk or kitchen table with a piece of paper and a nutrition calculator, which you can find online, and you can determine what the right meal plan is for you, how many calories are allocated to every gram of oatmeal or chicken breast or broccoli or blueberries or anything else. You can allocate that. You can spread that amongst three, four, five, or six meals, whatever suits your lifestyle and preference, and you can determine the most ideal meal plan for you. Or you can follow the state-of-the-art online diet and exercise program at thedolcediet.com and follow our three weeks to shredded program or living lean program, which does all of the calculation, all of the math, all of the programming, all of the nutritional creation for you. Every ingredient, every recipe is perfectly detailed for you. Right now, I'm following the three weeks to shredded program. When I put in all of my personal information during the onboarding, my lifestyle, my background, my history, my height, my weight, my age, all that, I was given in the most extreme weight loss program that we have, a 3,200 calorie diet. Bang! Like right spot on. And what we said before is, I need to take in 3,500 to 4,000 total calories per day on the average day in order to maintain my body weight with all the activity built in. The three weeks to shredded program, the sophisticated rule engine that we've created knew exactly to build me a 3,200 calorie program to ensure I'm maximizing body fat loss while still maintaining all the necessary energy to perform the activities at the very high level that I do so I can keep building muscle, improving athleticism, reshaping and sculpting my physique, and doing all the household chores and daily activities that all of us have in regular life. What's cool about the Three Weeks to Shredded program is it runs a concurrent calorie cycle and a carbohydrate cycle, which means the calories go up and they go down day by day as the carbohydrates go up and down on different days. So the calories are waving up and down on one schedule, the carbs are waving up and down on another schedule, the protein stays relatively static across, we're shooting for about 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of relatively lean body mass. You don't have to think about that unless you're doing your own program. The Three Weeks to Shredded and Living Lean program does that for you. And the fat relationship to carbohydrates balances back and forth. As the fat goes, or as the carbs go up, the fat goes down a little bit. As the carbs go down, the fat goes up a little bit. With this style of program, we are much better able to increase our energy, push the pace, build more muscle, improve our personal records inside the gym while getting leaner, getting lighter, tightening up the midsection, losing all that stubborn body fat, but never, never, never risking dropping below our BMR, which can lead to health issues, compromised immunity, or possible injury simply because there would be a lack of vital nutrients, micronutrients, phytochemicals, or just simply energy, simple energy from the calories consumed. That's what our program does. Now there's other program out there that you can certainly follow. You do not have to follow ours. Of course, I'm very proud of ours because I know how well intended ours is and how successful it is. I'm following it right now and I am absolutely crushing it. You can check out my Instagram page. You could see my my every other day, every third day way and I show photos of the scale and also I show progress updates, physique updates where you can literally see the way I look at how dramatically my body has changed over the last few weeks. So hopefully this video helps. I will do more videos on specific meal plans to follow, the best foods for fat loss, also for muscle gain. Leave questions below. If you have any specific questions, please leave them below. This channel is for you. This information is for you. I wanna make sure I provide you with the most honest, 
actionable and evidence-based information to dramatically improve your life. Thank you guys for being here. And until next time, boom.